Okay. So how can we forget winter storms brought the rain? Yes, but they also knocked out 2000 trees in San Francisco alone. In fact, California has lost 36 million trees in the past year. So it's safe to say the weather extremes from our changing climate are putting our plants under stress, right? And a new study shows they might be trying to communicate that through sound. So let's go ahead and bring in meteorologist VNA Arana. Uh, VNA, uh, plants can talk? Yeah. You know, it's an interesting take because essentially they do have a way of communicating, right? Okay. Maybe not in the way that we do, but they might change the color of their leaves to uh -huh. let us know that they're, you know, in need of water. Sure. And trees and plants, of course, are vital when it comes to oxygen, storing carbon, and giving life to the world's wildlife. And of course, a new study is showing us now that plants are making noises when they're stressed. Uh -huh. Now, this study was published in the science. Science journal cells showcasing the airborne sounds emitted by tomato and tobacco plants. Interestingly enough, now this was done inside an acoustic chamber and it may be hard to hear, but we're going to air it now. Okay? okay, so listen closely. Here's the sound they were able to capture. So it's sort of like a popping noise, uh -huh. right? The a little release, clicking, little popping. clicking, popping noise. Mm -hmm. Now, through these sounds, researchers were able to determine the dehydration level and level of injury based solely on the sound. Now, to get more insight, we asked Professor Lewis Feldman, a professor at plant biology at UC Berkeley, to see his take on the study. The columns of water, which are stretched in a plant, kind of like a rubber band, that they stretch so much like the rubber band that it breaks. And the breaking of the column of water or breaking of the rubber band is what makes the clicking noise, what makes that sound. It's called, uh, technically, it's called an embolism or cavitation. Those are the two terms that plant physiologists use to describe when that water column breaks and when you hear the clicking noise. So the plants are saying, like, I'm dehydrated, click, click, pop, pop. Um, so obviously, they did this in a controlled setting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm wondering, I have plants in my home. Can I hear them? Like, will I know when they need water? You know, I was work? wondering the same thing. Huge yeah. plant mom over here, right? <laughs> so I can see when my plants need water, but if I sit there closely, can I hear it? Uh -huh. Well, we were wondering the same thing, and I did ask him about similar scenarios, and he said in the past, farmers have placed microphones in fields or greenhouses to determine when the crops might be getting dry. Another interesting note within the study was the idea that perhaps wildlife or insects could in fact hear some sort of signal but maybe not as a way of alerting the animals themselves. Rather, the plant was trying to signal to itself or surrounding plants of a stress factor, things like lack of water. So binks uh -huh. might actually be able to hear oh, when my binks. plants. Right? Now that's not, of <laughs> course, that that's not has been tested or true, but yeah. you know, something along the lines of insects might be able to hear the sounds emitted, uh -huh. but it's not a signal for them. It's more like the plant that's emitting the sound. Yeah, oh, okay, so you, there, you were talking about lack of water, right? We're just emerging from this serious drought and uh, researchers have been keeping a close eye on our famous redwoods. So I'm wondering, uh, now that we're talking about sounds and everything, can, can mm -hmm. those redwoods make noise? Can they make sounds? Um, as our climate changes. You know, I did ask him about that connection because as we know, fog is also very important mm -hmm. for our redwood trees. Yes. And I said, you know, is this something that could possibly uh, be emitting from our redwoods? Sure. And here's what he had to say about that. It's well known, and in fact, there's an investigator here at Berkeley who has studied the fact that fog actually can be absorbed uh, by the tops of very tall trees like redwood trees. And in that circumstance, the absorbing of the fog probably would be a way of decreasing uh, the stress, and if there are actually clicking sounds going on at the top of a redwood tree, probably would alleviate them or maybe reduce them simply because there's a source of moisture very close to the top of the tree, which of course is very distant from the root system. Now that has not actually been done, mm -hmm. but he said that this could be something that we'd look into in the future. Okay. And measuring the sounds of this could essentially, uh, in the long run, lead to signs of how stress release from plants could actually connect us to our changing ecosystem when mm -hmm. it comes to our weather extremes in okay. the future. There's a lot to look into. Uh, Carl, Carl's yeah. a good. But I mean, if you find me setting up a little microphone <laughs> by my house plants. <laughs> Now you know why. And you should train <laughs> Binks to give you a heads up. Binks, years by the way, is my rescue pup. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wait to bring him over here. Uh, VNA, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You so know. fascinating.